Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at seed saving and I'm gonna break this down into very easy steps to identify any plant without Googling how to save the seeds and make it super simple, super, super simple. But first we have a sponsor for today's video and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with amazing resources. I've recently taken several courses on how to teach an amazing course on Skillshare. It's literally the name of the course because I see so much value in this platform. It allows the instructors to give you full length tutorials um, regardless of what the algorithm wants. And that allows you to, for example, give an entire lesson on how to compost without being dinged by the algorithm. This means there's more one-on-one -on -one time between teachers and students, and the teachers themselves can take a lot more pride in their work and thoroughly go through the course to ensure that you guys get the best delivery possible. The first thousand people are going to get 30 days free so you can actually check out the wide range of different courses out there because they have house plant courses, gardening courses, filming courses, editing courses, photography, you name it. So whatever kind of game you're trying to step up, Skillshare has a course for it. I urge you guys to go check that out. I will leave a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment for you. And again, this is a limited time offer. Only the first thousand people will get that 30 days free. And there's a lot of lessons you can do in 30 days. So, and then you'll get addicted like me and you won't stop. And that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> so thank you to today's sponsor Skillshare and let's get into the video. So a common misconception when it comes to seed saving is that the only reason to save seeds is to save money. And the reality is that that is not necessarily true. Another great reason to save seeds comes down to that plant's ability to survive in your climate. When you save seeds from plants grown in your environment that produce fruit, you already have a plant that's genetically expressing traits ideal for your environment. So when you go to select your seeds, you want to select the cream of the crop. So the characteristics that you like the most in that plant. So for example, if you like big slicer tomatoes of a certain size, texture, you want to save seeds from that tomato. The same goes for peppers. If you have a bell pepper of a particular size, taste and texture that you enjoy the most, save seeds from that. So as you're going through your garden prep this year, save seeds through that. So as you go through prepping your garden, pickling, canning, that sort of thing, start saving those seeds and then reserve them off to the side for next year. Now, I used to get so hung up on this when it comes to seed saving. What kind of seed is it? How do you save it? And the rules are pretty simple. There are three. There's flower saving, flower seed saving, there's dry seed saving, and there's wet seed saving. It's literally that simple. So let's go through each one and how you preserve or get each one of those ready. So flower seed saving is literally this simple. The seeds inside the flower is what you're going to save. And you wanna wait for these to dry out for as long as possible. So you wanna leave this on the plant until the last possible minute. You can leave them out until it frosts. It will not harm them. So an example of that is sunflower seeds, but some that may not be as obvious that you can save seeds from are these. So here's a very ugly lettuce plant, but these little flowers and little poofs are actually seeds. So you can just remove this and inside of that, you have your lettuce seeds. So this requires zero work other than putting them in a container for next year. So this is another great example of seeds that can be saved. This is from a flower. I believe it's a lissum. I can't tell at this point because it's pretty much degraded to nothing. But this again, you would just save from the flowers. And in this case, I would just crush up the entire powdered portion because I'm not gonna be able to find the seeds. They're too small and then put the whole flour, decayed flour into a bag or a container and then seed that in the spring. So the next form is dry seed saving and that can be things like squash, summer and winter squash, peppers, hot peppers, that sort of thing. And the key here is that it just doesn't have the gelatinous outside inside of that 
fruit. These ones are very easy to save. For ones you know that will not save well inside of the fruit or preserve throughout the entire winter, you would want to remove those from the inside of the actual plant and then lay them out on paper towel, allow them to dry completely because you don't want any mold to form and then simply bag those up. You can store them in your freezer or you can just store them in your cold cellar or fridge, anything of that nature, and they will not sprout so long as they are dry. You can even store them with the paper towel to help ensure that. Now, so shout out to my sister-in-law here. She had a really cool idea this spring with spaghetti squash, and that was to lay it in the garden and then essentially whack it with a hoe and cut it up and release the seeds from there, which did sprout and did yield actual spaghetti squash. So for things that will last until the next spring, maybe they won't be edible by next spring, but you can just simply seed those directly. And the last and final seed saving technique is very specific to tomato plants mostly and that is something with the gelatinous coating on the outside so you want to pick a tomato that's overripe and then just simply break into it and squeeze the seeds into a cup now i've been using um for quite a while now the actual spice shaker jars you could just get from dollarama i put them in there they're glass i let them ferment for about a week or two and then i simply wash that off I'll we're looking for is for that gelatinous coating to be gone so for depending on your climate so I'm in a cooler climate it's gonna take me a little bit longer just because my house is probably colder than someone that's like in California so some people will be able to get that fermentation process to happen quicker but all we're looking for is that gelatinous coating to be gone so we just have to simply take our fingers give the actual seeds a little squeeze and see if we can feel anything if we can feel the gelatinous and the seed is uh, kind of moving away from us it's not ready yet but if we can grab that seed physically and touch kind of its harder outer coating then it's fine it's ready to go and then we can just simply transfer that to paper towel dry it off and store it the same way we would store our zucchini or our squash seeds or any of the, those other ones so one thing I do think is important to note is that there is a potential for cross-pollination in any flower that is open so this will include things like squash uh, tomatoes we won't have this issue with peppers can be open pollinated as well and so you may want to just do a quick Google on that I'll provide a list here of the common ones I can find that are self pollinated where we won't end up with crossing unless we very purposely do it it's like 99.9% .9 of these are self pollinated meaning the offspring from that are going to be identical to what you're seeding here today however if you save seeds from open pollinated plants you would want to actually cover them cover the flowers with those little treat baggies to ensure no pollinators can get in and you physically would want to do the pollinating to ensure the crosses are accurate now i don't get too hung up on this i grow spaghetti squash pumpkins kind of all in the same patch my spaghetti squash taste and preserve everything normal to what a spaghetti squash does uh, but they look a little different on the outside and that is because they are saved seeds so that is maybe something to keep in mind if you want identical clones like a spaghetti squash that for sure looks like a spaghetti squash you may not want to save seeds from those flowers i find are just normal they just do their thing they don't cross pollinate very often and that's because you would need to have a very specific species and it's just too much diversity in our communities and in a city environment for that cross pollination to happen and then my last kind of Point here because I don't want to get in trouble with like proven winners or wave or anything like that is some of these are technically patented seeds especially in the flower world <laughs> so if it says patented then you cannot save seeds from those technically and grow them I don't know the flower rules behind this I know the food rules behind this but when it comes to decorative flowers you may be able to save seed and then replant them for yourself but I know for sure you cannot sell the seeds and you cannot sell the plants I know that absolutely because it will come for you it will come for you so just keep that in mind for things like carrots beets onions leeks anything that's grown in the ground and is kind of like a root vegetable we'll actually have to leave them in place for potentially one year depending on how hot your season is and how long it is but otherwise we would have to leave it in the ground for two years and fingers crossed it would overwinter in our zone so those are ones that we may not be able to get to flower and then save the seeds from just based on your climate but for some of us it may be possible and
and we're just gonna follow the exact same rules as the flower saving rules from before. So this is very, very easy, guys. Don't put too much thought into this. I wouldn't worry about freezing or scarification or vernalization, any of that, because the majority of the seeds that we have will be just fine, especially if we transfer them into you know, the freezer or the fridge and then out again. If you put them in the freezer for two weeks prior to actually seeding them, they'll germinate just fine. I mean, there's exceptions to that, like the loofah seeds that do need the stratification. There's a lot of gourd uh, seeds out there. A lot of gourds actually just in general need some form of scarification or um, disruption of that seed coating. But otherwise, very, very simple, very, very, very simple, guys. Do not overthink this. You're going to wet seed save. And the only one that I think a majority you're gonna encounter with that is tomatoes, where you have to just ferment them. The rest, you're literally just going to take the seeds out of the fruit. And the third one is going to be, you're gonna steal from the flower and you're gonna wait till the last possible moment. So everything's dead here. It's deader than a doornib. I've got leaves falling. Everything's kind of shutting down for the season. Right now, where everything's really nice and dry, it's a great time to go grab those seeds. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you've been growing from seed and for how long, saved seed and for how long. I have talked to some of you about this and I know some folks out there have been saving seeds for a long time, like their grandparents' uh, seeds type thing. So that's kind of cool. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.